The first thing I thought of was, oh my God, we have no musical ability in my family. Oh my, this is going to be torture. And I was right. Amber came home and she had this thing called a trombone. I'd never seen one before up close. And she sounded like a bull moose when she blew it. And I thought, it's not going to get any better. Yes, I would say the marching band's like a big giant family. I mean, when you spend 12 hours each week out there on that practice field in 90 degree weather, sweating and getting <laughs> just so much work done, but you're so exhausted all the time. You know, it, it's, you have to form relationships. You have to be a family, you know. We're not out on that field marching by ourselves. We're out there marching on that field with 160 other people. And if we all didn't become a family, it wouldn't come together the way it does. When Amber first said, I want to be in the band, I talked to my mother. And I said, Mom, she can't play instruments with that little hand. And Mom said, what did we tell Amber when she was little? I said that she could do anything she wanted to. She said, well, I'm going to change that. She said, I think that a band director like Mr. Williams has dealt with enough children with different things going on in their bodies that he can find an instrument she can play. And let's give her a chance. And I was like, I'm all for it, but let's buy a used whatever it is to start with and see if she's any good. I said, Mom, you can't carry a note. I can't carry a note. My kids used to go to sleep just in self-defense because they want me to shut up and stop singing. We have no musical ability. Where did she get any? And Mom was like, well, we're going to give it a try. And I'm like, okay. So we went that weekend, and we came to Johnson City. And went to, to a music store because Mr. Williams said, I think the trombone will be perfect for her because the smaller hand will be the part that blows, uh, pushes that piece back and forth, and she'll be able to do that. So here we go, and we're in the store, and the guy gets this old one out, and it's like $400. And he says, okay, let's see if she can play it. She's had one music class, and all it did was tell her that they thought she could play the trombone. We hand it to her. And she looks at it and she looks at him and goes, you ought to do. He said, you haven't played it. She said, I don't have to play yet. But she said, I will. And she learned. There's a very, very big difference in high school marching band and college marching band and not just their teaching styles. High school marching band is more geared toward competitions we're not there for the football team, even though a lot of people think we are. We're not. When we do our rehearsals and we do performances and stuff, that's all geared for how well are we going to do at the next con competition. It's not how well are we going to do at the football game. We don't really care about the football game in high school. It's, it's about going and getting the trophies from the competitions. However, in college, we don't have marching band competitions. We're there for the team. We're there solely to cheer on the football team. That's our job. And everything that we do, every practice, every football game, everything is for the team. So it's, it's, it's a lot different. In marching band in high school, the shows are more complex. You know, they're more how do I put it? They're more geared towards musical people because those people will understand what's going on. But in college, our job is to entertain the audience and keep the team spirit up. So our shows can be simple, but we do them very, very well because we're all very experienced. Our music doesn't have to be very hard or complex. It just has to be good music, and it has to be music that's going to entertain and keep everybody going. So it's a lot different. I agree. Um, I think music was a turning point for Amber especially because some kids were always mean to her when she was growing up. Like kids will be. They'll find something about you and, and give you a hard time. And when she joined band, Amber came alive because all of a sudden she was part of a group that liked her for her 
you know, not because she was friends with the cheerleaders or, or something like that. She was like for her because they, they have this thing in band where they say, you know, like the older ones in there are the parents and they have their newbies, the, the little kids and their babies and, and they protect each other and they teach each other. And it's like a family that they come together. And she came alive when she found out that the upper kids in band, like the juniors and seniors, didn't mind a little freshman, you know, falling around behind them and running from them, and actually encouraging her to say, oh, wow, you're doing great. Let's try this. And it gave Amber a feeling of belonging that she never had before, not at school. I've got one piece of advice. Never say to them, you can't do that. You will ruin their life. You support them. If they can't do it, trust me. They'll figure it out. You'll try something else. Don't you ever tell that child they can't do it. You support them. You do whatever it takes. If you have to take out a car loan, a house loan, it doesn't matter. You provide what they need because you will be blessed as they succeed and you'll see them grow up to change other people's lives as well as their own because being involved in something outside of of just math and english and science all the time some extracurricular that makes them think and feel what it is to be a human being is never a mistake